In the last video, we talked about the goals of a section. We want to minimize or maximize some function, f of x, y, or f of x, y, z, subject to constraints, g of x, y, or g of x, y, z is equal to zero, or, or some constant that we rearrange. And this was our uh, this was our initial example to explain how we did this, although we solved this using calculus one methods. Of course, we, we really didn't solve it, we just kind of skipped over lots of details and I wrote, over the, wrote down the answer. And here is the method of the Grange multipliers. So what do we want to do? Set the gradient of f equal to lambda times the gradient of g. Set g of x, y, z equal to zero. We have a bunch of equations, solve those equations. So let's redo, let's redo the problem that was our toy example here. Let's redo it in the case, uh, let's redo it using the Grange multipliers. So we need an f of xy and a g of xy. Our f of xy is going to be we said closest to the origin. And so that's going to be square root of x squared plus y squared, because we, we want to minimize distance. Our constraint, g of x, y, is going to be 2x plus 3y minus 6. And we want this expression to equal 0. Now, to make our lives just a little bit easier, I alluded to this in the previous video, instead of minimizing the square root of x squared plus y squared, we're going to minimize, we're going to minimize x squared plus y squared itself. Because any, any uh, pair xy that minimize x squared plus y squared will also minimize the square root of x squared plus y squared. So, you know, we could do this, but using this as our x, y, sorry, our f of x, y will make us, will make our lives computationally much more, uh, much more simple. So what do we have to do? We need to write down our Lagrange multiplier equations, and this is the key one here. The gradient of f is equal to lambda times the gradient of g. So the gradient of f here is going to be the x partial derivative is 2x, the y partial derivative is 2y. Um, the gradient of g here, the x partial derivative is 2, the y partial derivative here is 3. So our Lagrange equations are 2x comma 2y, this vector is equal to the lambda times 2 comma 3. And really, uh, this, is, this looks like one equation. This is really two separate equations here. The first slot tells us 2x is equal to 2 times lambda. The second slot tells us 2y is equal to 3 times lambda. So this is what we get by comparison. This is what we get from this equation. And we also need to remember that our we have our constraint, 2x plus 3y minus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, so we have three variables, x, y, and lambda, and we have three equations, 1, 2, and 3. All these equations are, this is nice, uh, they're all linear. They, uh, we won't always get linear equations, everything that we do, but... This is a case where we can very quickly and easily solve this system of equations. So this first line, 2x is equal to 2 lambda. Well, this is going to tell us that x is equal to lambda. The second line, if we solve this for lambda in terms of y, this tells us that lambda is equal to 2 thirds y. And if lambda is equal to x and lambda is equal to 2 thirds y, this tells us that x needs to equal 2 thirds y. So we've replaced these first two equations, two equations and three variables, x, y, and lambda, with one equation and two variables, just x and y. And to finish this off, what we can do is that we can substitute this 
down into this equation and get two times two thirds y plus three y minus six is equal to zero. And if you solve this out, you get y is equal to 18 over 13. And x needs to equal 2 thirds times 18 over 13. And so this is going to be 12 over 13. And if you remember, that's the same answer I asserted was the x value here in our original example last video. Okay, so what is the point on this line? Uh, 2x plus 3y is equal to 6, closest to the origin. x is 12 over 13, y is thir eight, uh, 18 over 13. To draw a picture of this, to draw a picture of this, you know, here is our line, 2x plus 3y is equal to 6, and so the point 12 over 13, 18 over 13 is right about there. So this is the point that minimizes the distance. Um, I, I should say a, a quick sketch here shows us that this point, you know, we, it's a critical point. We can, from the picture, see it must be a, must be the minimum moving off in either direction means that the distance from the origin keeps getting larger and larger and larger. Okay, so that is our first example here of doing Lagrange multipliers. And so you might wonder why are we bothering to do, to, to have this you know, rather complicated method when we could solve things using uh, calculus one methods. Well, eventually things are going to get more and more complicated. So let's do a second example here in this video find the greatest and smallest values of f of x, y is equal to x times y on the ellipse x squared over eight plus y squared over, over two is equal to one. So this is already, we already are told that f of x, y is equal to x times y. Uh, g of x, y is going to be x squared over eight plus y squared over two minus one. So we can have this equal to zero. However, in practice, you know, if you don't move the one to the other side, just say your g of x, y is x squared over eight, x squared over eight plus y squared over two, and you just have g of x, y equal to a constant, the gradient won't, you know, when we take partial derivatives, it won't make any difference. Okay, so what are our equations here? The gradient of f is equal to the partial derivative of this with respect to x is y. The partial derivative of this with respect to x is, sorry, this partial derivative of this, let me slow down here. The partial derivative of this with respect to x is y. The partial derivative of this with respect to y is x. Okay, uh, gradient of g here is going to be the partial derivative of this with respect to x is x over four. Partial derivative of this with respect to y is y. Okay, and so our Lagrange equations is going to say yx is equal to lambda times x over four comma y. So we have the following equations. y is equal to lambda times x over four and x is equal to lambda times y. And then don't forget we still have our constraint up here, the x squared over eight plus y squared over two is equal to one. Okay, we need to solve, we need to solve these equations. I mean, we need to solve all three of them, but the way that we're going to do this is by starting off just looking at the first two equations and uh, figuring out what they are, uh, solving, getting rid of lambda. So we can, just as before, get rid of the lambda, 
Remember this one from five minutes ago, we start off with these two equations to get rid of the lambda to write x in terms of y. Okay, so what happens here is that um, what we can do is, well, if x is equal to lambda times y, y is equal to lambda over 4 times x, but x is lambda times y. So what we have here is y is equal to lambda squared over 4 times y. So there's a couple of cases here. There's a couple of cases here that we can go into. And what is our case? Either, either if y is equal to 0, if y is equal to 0, then we have 0 on the left, we have 0 on the right, and that's certainly true. However, if y is not 0, then we could cancel out from both sides, cancel out y from both sides to get 1 is equal to lambda squared over 4. So that would be lambda squared is equal to 4, lambda is equal to 2, or lambda is equal to negative 2. Okay, so this is going to be our first Lagrange multipliers equation where we have to break things down into several different cases. So let's start off with the y is equal to 0 case. If y is equal to 0, we know that x is equal to lambda times y. But y is equal to 0, so this shows us that x is equal to 0. So it looks like it looks like we're getting to the point 0 comma 0. But remember, everything has to satisfy the equation. X and Y has to satisfy the equation that X squared over 8 plus Y squared over 2 is equal to 1. And what this is telling us, 0 squared over 8 plus 0 squared over 2 is equal to 0. That's not equal to 1. This doesn't work. This can't work. So we can rule out the case we can rule out a case y is equal to 0. So now we have to go on to the cases x is equal to 2, x is equal to negative 2. Okay, so for, sorry, I, I said x equal to 2, I meant lambda is equal to 2 and negative 2. So lambda is equal to 2. Okay, so this tells us that if, if, if lambda is equal to 2, this tells us that x is equal to 2y and y is equal to, going back here, y is equal to x over 2. Those are the same thing. But now what we're going to do is that we're going to substitute this into this equation just as we did before. Just as we did before, working with this, with our constraint equation here. So, x is equal to 2y, 2y squared over 8, plus y squared over 2 is equal to 1. And so we would end up with uh, 2y squared is 4y squared over 8, plus y squared over 2. This is 1 half y squared, this is also 1 half y squared, this is y squared, so we have 1 here. So y is equal to plus or minus 1. So this gives us points that if y is 1, x is 2 times 1 is 2. If x is, sorry, if y is negative 1, x is 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So we have found two possible candidate points to deal with here, 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 1. Okay, our third case here, the lambda is equal to negative 2. So in this case, x is equal to negative 2 times y. 
Let's plop that into this equation once again. Negative 2y squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 is equal to 1. This gives us my negative 2y quantity squared is again 4y squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 is equal to, this is again, y squared is equal to 1, y is equal to plus or minus 1. If y is equal to positive 1, if y is equal to positive 1, x is in this case negative 2 times y, so negative 2. If y is negative 1, x is negative 2 times negative 1, x is positive 2. And so let's go to, let's, let's uh, write down, we found four points here, 2, 1, negative 2, 1, neg negative 2, uh, sorry, 2, 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, negative 1. And at this point, let's not lose sight of, you know, we haven't gone back to this slide for a while. What are we trying to accomplish? We're trying to find the greatest and smallest values of f of x, y is equal to x times y. So what we need is that we need to, we have found our four candidate points for mins and maxes. We found our four candidate points using Lagrange multipliers. What is our function here? f of x, y is x times y. So 2 times 1, negative 2 times negative 1, negative 2 times positive 1, 2 times negative 1. We get 2, we get 2, we get negative 2, we get negative 2. So what's the greatest that, uh, that we can find here? This is the greatest values of f of x, y is x, y on the, on the ellipse. And these down here are the smallest. Okay, so that's a little bit of a lengthy problem, and this video has gone on a little bit longer than I would have liked, but let's just spend a few moments to recap what we did. We wrote down, you know, we, we had our f, we had our, our g. We wrote down the gradient of f is equal to the lambda times the gradient of g. We wrote down the gradient of f is equal to the lambda times the gradient of g plus our constraint, g of x, y. And then we solve these three equations. It took this much space and all of this page to come up with the only possible solutions are these four points here. These are the places it says here, to find the local max and min values of f subject to this constraint, find the values of x, y, there's no z here in lambda that satisfy these equations. So these are the values that satisfy, simultaneously satisfy those equations. So those are the only points we have to check.